Before cabling the controller, ensure that the power is turned off. Let's start with the power cable. Plug it in with this side up into the X0 connector. Give it a push, turn, and it's connected. Now, let's continue with the robot power cable that goes into the X1 connector. Ensure that the cable lock is open. Then, insert it into the X1 connector and close the cable lock. Next, let's connect the flex pendant cable to the X4 connector. Plug it in with this side up to the controller. Push and turn the locking ring clockwise to fasten. Then we proceed with connecting the sockets to the I.O. board. First, we need to insert the X2 socket into the input connector of the I.O. board. Push it firmly into place. Then, insert the X1 socket into the output connector on top of the I.O. board. Push it firmly into place. Then, we proceed with connecting the X19 and the X20 sockets. Insert the X19 socket into the X19 power supply connector. Moving on, we now need to connect the X20 socket into the X20 connector. Next, we plug in the X15 socket to the controller. Now, we need to connect the X14 socket for the emergency, auto and general stop. The jumper cables that we are about to mount will disable the analog safety circuits. This requires a risk assessment to ensure that other safety arrangements are in place. Connect slot 9 with slot 11. Connect slot 10 with slot 12. Continue with connecting slot 14 with slot 16. Finally, connect slot 13 with slot 15. Then, use a flathead screwdriver to gently fasten the sockets. And we're done with the controller ready to be powered on.